man with the golden touch. With the golden touch. The golden touch. Welcome back. The Golden Touch Podcast with your boy Touch Matuak Tuak. Wow, guys, today we got a special guest in our podcast. He needs no introduction. The brother man, born in 1981 at Bupita Tuana. Uh, the brother man is a Motuakolista. The brother man is a farmer. The brother man is a former Morafi member. Uh, I think his first signing was through So Hype Records which is a Botswana record label owned by my brother, Masi Hule. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the big brother, Momolimi Motapile Mozule, in the Golden Touch podcast. What's up, big man? Chapu is a brayaka. No, it's a brayaka, man. We know. Ah, I'm going to welcome, welcome to Bawa, big guy. Thank you so much. Don't take it, Rebo. It's a Botswana guy. Hey, I'm a Botswana man. You can only be a Botswana. Yeah. I do. <laughs> no, no, but like yeah. Bupita Tswana Tswana, you know, yeah. it's the same thing. No, I mean, you know, Ronald uh, Challenger, for all these years, we are still maintaining colonial boundaries yeah. that divide us ideologically as well. In the resort, one. Again. Yeah. Who put up that fence? What's I mean like you're not gonna maintain now. So these are conversations that are already tried, but naturally uh who is my grandfather owned land Kolobatsi. Kolobatsi, ne? Can I grew up Kolobatsi, I did my uh preschool Kolobatsi until form five Kolobatsi, yeah. So Yeah. So by virtue. Uh, of that, uh, uh, many of uh, my very close relatives, you know, and oh, okay. uh, yeah, uh, so generally, you always go and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm cultured in, in, in the ways of Botswana. Um, I've never felt that much of. I mean, yeah. somewhere else. No, because I want to go around the mobiles. You be always relaxed, unlike yeah. other South African yeah. artists. Yeah. You know, Malaiti Rabas were gala, you ever talk on any superstar. Yeah. But one you can see what ah, Briar or no more high. You get it. I really want to go to the hotel. Whatever one's hell are cooking it and thing, would you know, like yeah. you said, uh, in the years that I was signed to so hype. Literally, you know, uh, yeah. it was family, and um, uh, I have a very close relationship with your coach since the real Marcos is all going over 10 years now. Oh, okay. I'm always in G North co- coach. I left there, I have my own yeah. room there, so oh, nice. yeah, I'm home every time I do something. But I'm and uh, uh, we've built that re- re- relation over and above blood, but. In, in the Mutsoko movement over the years. No doubt, so, no doubt. So, but Tataki is his friends. Yes, bro. Yeah, because it exists. Mm. How did you meet up with Brahma Si Uhule? Yeah. And how did you get to get signed to So High Records? Well, I met Masi way back in 2002 or 2003 when we were still pushing T-Joint. T-Joint, Tawale yeah. Tebatu. Yes, 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 yes. Um, it is still very young. But uh, it was through Siabel. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because at the time we were still working with Sabelo. Oh, okay. With Jabba. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this is how I met my So how the relationship um, developed was that um, uh, Masi wanted to do a feature for T-Joint. Mm-hmm. So he approached us as Morafi. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we had this deal, okay, we'll do a song, and then uh, you help us with our music. Oh, we, yeah. are, we, we wanted to record three singles, two uh-huh. of our own and one for him. So he came with Tebazo Limutu uh, Litabo. And then we went to Clegg's Dop and we recorded Change a Number, which became a big... Change a Number, yes, Change a yeah. Number. Yeah, and then Murafi. in exchange, we did some joints from Ravi that uh, eventually helped them get a deal called uh, Get to Rav. Oh, so okay. the relationship goes way back then. Oh, but, great. But uh, Asiya was something else that happened much later. Oh, much great. Later. I remember, I think the first, first song that I heard yeah, yeah, Morafi was the wickedest. Yes. Was it called the wickedest? Uh, Hell yeah, I'm, I'm the, the wickedest. wickedest. Yeah. Yes. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That the, was before the original, the original one again, not yeah. the one that came out. The later. original one. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that was part of of the, the recording we did with Mas. Oh great. Yeah. So basically, Mas was the 
executive of that. We did that and Odi uh, Kenela Joao. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uncle Kenela Joao. Yeah. 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 I get to go to the movie, Clay Charis. In the beginning, but in yeah. the final end, uh, the title of the album is Matala Mudi Moments. Yeah, you know, uh, God's wisdom is infinite and it's self explanatory. That, uh, you know, there was a time that uh, we were not really religious or spiritualist, but just curious. That we spend a lot of time uh, uh, just. Going through text of Bible and trying to understand it with jabs, you know, um, he had that sort of him. It excited him. It was nice to just have intellectualize the ideas of of belief, you know, yes, and um, yes. yeah, of all the books from Genesis to Revelation. Please, what yeah. I came out with uh, from the Bible, which was most relevant to me, was that God's wisdom is infinite. Great. Yeah. Yeah. And then after Amadi yeah. Mamma, yeah. and then after Amadi Mamma, yeah. 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 great. After Amadi, um, after Amadi, then you you released uh, Motamai. I released Motamai. Yes. Yeah. So it was revolutionary in the sense that um, it was beyond, it was not independent. You know. Yeah. It was, you know, at the change of when majors were dying in South Africa and okay. the industry was going independent. Uh-huh. Yeah, you know, so because with the Koka, we had been signed to EMI. Okay. Yeah, but we, we needed to be independent and to own our masters, you know, and, uh, and um, it was at that time. So we did it independent um, with the JV, uh, with Tulam, who was running um, development program called Live Expressions in Mafike. Yeah, Go that's where both, yeah, the Fifis came from, the Easy Labs, the oh, Caspers, yeah. and a lot, and the people, who, and the most spiky, the guys who produced the album, you know, a lot of uh, development came from there. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, we twinned and we did Mozamai together, you know. Uh, Tula with all his experience, helped make it very phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we shot yeah. video, yeah, Blue Baby, Ko, Shaka Shok. Ko Shaka Shok. No, 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 just in Shaka Shok. But Mobutuan? Yeah, yeah, but oh. somewhere was Kagan God was shot by. Shakawe. I think it was Shakawe. Yeah, yeah. Takatokwa. Yeah. Ego Takatokwa. Oh, yeah. that video was shot at Takatokwa. Yes. Lubibi, L- 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 I, I remember it features Easy Lab and some other brother. No, the, the, the track Lubibi features in Tirelan Bema. Oh. That's where we met with Tirelan as well. No, now I'm talking about Nitefata. Nitefata is, uh, yeah, it was, it's with Ras Mesa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So, you know, we met in Tirelan, we have. A relationship that's been going on ever since over 10 years now with Ndirelang. Ndirelang you know? like uh, he's my neighbor, yes. Kwaramo. So. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, a, that's, a, oh, that's yes. a soulful brother. No, right there. <laughs> <laughs> no you know, yeah, 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 no, man. <laughs> uh, I wasn't aware. You no, know, mm. NT, you know, it's phenomenal. And um, of course, it's so unfortunate that, you know, he's more prominent in Kubo Japani than. He is let alone in yeah. South Africa, let alone in South Africa, you know, that uh, the mechanisms are not there to tend to really give the talent the platform it deserves. Yeah, yeah and um, but yeah, we've done a lot of great things in Tiralang over the years, you know, and mm-hmm. yeah, but so we met through that journey. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, so after that, uh, that's when we did Asia with Masi. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Which was it? I see. Was it like? Is it your last album ever since? No, no, no. In twenty twenty, I released an EP called Soma State of Mutsuwa. Oh Dress. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. But I didn't really market it. I just dumped it online because I wanted to see how online works. What's yeah. the mechanisms yeah, of it? Yeah, so yeah, that yeah. to know that we didn't walk away from the EMIs only to get into another slave contract. You know what I mean? <laughs> when are we going to own our stuff? Yeah. So yeah. it was just an experimentation. But also it was a demand from Zokolista Zebra. Ah man, dressing man. Serious. Yeah, drop something for us. Yeah. And, uh, Cause Mo, appreciate. you've always you've always came came like to be this like a revolutionary, yeah. very very highly conscious yes. rapper. Yes. Which I, I I wanna like like give you the, like your flowers for that. We really really appreciate you for that, my brother. You know like this typical uh, mainstream yes. rapper. Yes. You focused. Yes. And 
I believe there's this there's this track like you dropped I believe or was it in the Motswako tape Yara Le Monka, yes. where you were rallying for you know calling for working class unity the track is called Blue Collar Blue Collar yeah Blue yeah. Collar came out initially in a, so in a hype magazine hype, tape. not Motswako tape yeah. hype magazine yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think at that early years that I was starting to develop ideological groundings, you know, still trying to find myself, but then exposing myself to literature, Moshe Kovara, Fidel, you know, and um, uh, Chairman Mao, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah that, that, that kind of literature, Sankara, mm. uh, you know, um, and, and trying to really balance the world that uh, socialism, you know, Communism, capitalism. Mm. Yeah. What does it mean for us and, and, our, and the futures of our, our children? You know. So I think it was at that time. But uh, when you are young, you're hot, blood, hard blooded. You know. Yeah. Yeah. The blood. <laughs> yeah. You know. You you're scared of nothing. You go on. You know. Mm. So when I wrote Blue Collar, I was working at a chicken farm. You were working in a chicken farm. Yeah, I was working okay. in a chicken as a laborer, earning oh. like seven hundred and fifty rand. But month. you were still rapping. Yeah, of course, I was a yeah, rapper, but yeah. that's when I had stopped uh, rapping with Motu, uh, with Morav. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, and I was just farming full time, and I, I got a job at, at this uh, chicken farm, and I was working there as a laborer. Oh. But uh, it was just for me to experience the life of a laborer, you know, mm -hmm. uh, just based on the ideas of Cher and what he he termed to be um, the new Kada, oh, the yeah. one who doesn't only think but does. Yeah. You know, you yeah. know, because Sokovara used to uh, work in the sugar cane fields the whole day in the evening go work in the sugar mills and Kabuma too he was the um, uh, the bank governor of Cuba and the head of the military <laughs> well, so he was a minister wow. but during the day that. he worked in the sugar fields in the evening he was in the sugar mills and oh. then if he had stayed business he put appointments from Buma 1 a.m. So if you wanted to see Minister Share, mm. yeah, you have to come at 2 a.m. in the morning to see wow. him in his office. That's very insightful. Yeah, and he used to sleep in his office, actually. Oh, serious? Yeah, he didn't have time to go home and, That's so and cuddle his wife. That's so revolutionary. <laughs> so he was a revolutionary, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're going through that phase of trying to understand what a, being a revolutionary is about. Okay, okay Mr. Mo, let's take a look. The Golden Touch podcast with Mo Molimi Touch Motuak Tuak. We're coming back. We're just taking a little break. The man with the golden touch. With the golden touch. With the golden touch. With the golden touch. Mr. Mo. Yeah. Welcome back to the Golden Touch podcast. You do my like touch. I see you rocking savage, brother. Savage, man. Looking dope. Savage, man. Looking dapper. That is awesome. Ah, thanks a lot, my brother. Look at that. Mr. Mo, in 2012. Yeah. Like it was nine, or was it nine days before the bloodied bodies of uh, mine workers at Americana? Yeah. yeah. You released a single which was titled 10111 yeah. through DJ Lemonka's yeah. Motoko tape. Yeah. And I, I remember the, the, the track, it also first uh, featured in the soundtrack, uh, District 9, nine. the sci fi. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yes. yes. Wow. Yes. Can we talk about 10111? What yeah. was the inspiration behind the joint? No, man, you know, these cops, man, they threw me in jail, <laughs> man. I think that's the long and short of it, you know? And that was just before Amanti. But that also kind of saved, saved me because after that experience, I got back into focusing on pushing Amanti through, you know? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, but three three months later, the album came out because when I came out of uh, holding, well, I was just at the holding cells. Yeah, but yeah. it was just a rude awakening, you know? So I oh. concentrated. And when I was finishing the album, I considered that should I actually do this song in this album? And I thought, but Amanti already had that spirit that I had put, uh, Amazon diluted with uh -huh. useless emotions. So I was like, I'll do it after. Let me push Amanti. Yes. You know, because I mean, Amanti, I took about 18 months to put it together. Uh, you must remember, it was on the back of Mafukwame, uh, Marua Pula, uh -huh. uh, YBA to Northwest. So, <laughs> so, you know, I had to put a lot of thinking into it how this album was going to be not only good, but different. So that it, it mustn't be like, yeah, but we've heard this before. Serious, I you see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So there was the, the nice thing about that era, that, you know, that wanted to set a level there, but everybody had, was bringing his own 
yeah, or, or you know uh, Cause, feel to because I, I believe like you're one of the first uh, pioneers of Motuako who introduced the, like the, you know the revolutionary yes. type of Element, rapping yes, and yes. I believe you you always come through as a rapper who's never who's like never unfazed by the yeah. glitz and glams yes, you yeah, know yeah. always keeping it real yeah. Always living uh, up to your name, yes. Mulimi, yes. the farmer. Yes. Can you talk also about that, you yeah. as a farmer and as a rapper? Yeah. Look, I mean, I must uh, create clarity. I think in those early formative years, one, I was influenced by the literature I was reading, like I was saying, but also by um, a resurgent movement of Rastafara's Okay. And we had a, a privilege of being in the, you know, um, audience of at once on a level, Sipoman to Ras Kidion, who is head of the political school school union right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, Rastafari, I, you know, who was fashion designer, creative in a way, yeah, but yeah. getting an, an accounting student, you know, uh, an, an accountant by profession, mm-hmm. you know, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, living from the sweat of their brows, you know, doing handwork and working towards that independence of mind, but also of reality, you know. So uh, that's when the whole farming thing really touched base with me, because really, by the way, there's nothing unique about me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's nothing unique about me. Yeah, there's if not more raro na there's a lot of people who are living in Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but it's that influence, really, that uh, uh, pushed me to taking up agriculture as, uh, as my future job you know okay yeah so very early in life i knew it's something i wanted to do for the rest of my life but also try to turn it into a business something i can live up to uh-huh. not only but live for my children for real yeah for real because you can't live as they job for your children you know yes yeah mm. i've seen in your in your in your packaging yes like do you distribute in botswana i did once through force through force yeah oh okay yeah but uh, the reality core i still don't have the product capacity to supply all the markets I have built yet it's not a bad thing because uh, you don't undermine the mileage of marketing yes. creating a demand even if it takes you 20 years it's fine create that demand so when the product comes mm-hmm. you know you yeah you see how the Chinese have mastered can we strike Africa. a deal yeah can we strike a deal <laughs> I'm a marketer yes and I, I believe you you have a product yeah. and the product has to reach Botswana market. Yes. So highlight me anytime. We can sit down, my brother. Definitely. We can sit down. Definitely. I believe I believe we can do we can come up with something really potent. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Create a presence, create a footprint and keep pushing. Yeah, because you know, we are Motoko listers, but yes. it shouldn't be just about the microphone only. No. It's all about also like uh networking and yeah. uh you know, creating some ties together. I think from, you know, the groundwork that Hannah Simula re- falling in love with rap from the 90s, the independence of the Puff Daddies, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, shoot nights, you know, creating record labels that grew up, grew into being uh, multinational businesses. Look at what uh, Rock Nation is doing today. Boss. Yeah. So it's on the back of the marketing that music gives you. I get it. Yeah. So... Yeah. If you, are, if you are halfway there when you have prominence, a friend of mine, Pilato, said to me a long time ago was that, you know, you guys, uh, uh, you are so advantaged that whatever you sell mm. after your music, you're probably going to be so good because it's so hard to sell music. Yeah. Because me- nobody needs music. It's not a need. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. So uh, you have to work hard to sell, to sell it. Mm. For people to spend their money for it, mm. to leave their homes on a Sunday, uh, mm. where they could be chilling mm. and enjoying their last day before they go to work, yeah. to drive off by escapade, <laughs> <laughs> just to go watch you perform. Yeah. You know, you have to sell it hard. You know, so if you can master that, you you possibly can sell anything else. You know, uh, so when you see what what Jay Z and uh, what Puffy have uh, developed in the champagne market. And other, you know, from the clothing to to other spheres, you know. Rappers now nowadays they sell anything, right? You see what I'm saying? They no, but not even really. I think we we are not there yet because you know, like when you look for North Africa, um, 
our prominent, most prominent, you know, artist, Bonangs, Boitis, aka Kespers. Yeah. You know, somehow it seems like they are bottled in, into the liquor market. You know, that's the most exposure you can get. And or, 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 yeah, we know about Jay Z have sells Asia Space and stuff, but mm, mm, mm. you know, it, we don't see ourselves diversifying into more products. You know, when I go into a supermarket today, yeah, um, I still get so mad because any other supermarket you walk into, you know, all of them, the chain stores that we know, mm. I don't need to promote them here. But it's so difficult to find a, a black product, bleach, Boss. washing powder, talking, ab talking about uh, black products, Zimbas, uh, nothing. I have a product which is like a cake mix. Yes, me and my girlfriend. Yes. Uh, We've been trying to hit like these big retail stores, yes. and it's like uh, most Botswana, yeah, they look at the product and they don't believe or this is a Botswana product. Yes, how can a Botswana come up with such a yes. good product? Yes, this is not supposed to be. A, it's like we don't believe in ourselves. ourselves yeah, 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 to back our own products, you know. Mm. Yeah, but I think more than uh, that, we need to have been at a position where recognize Botswana. Renali chin store yaro. For real. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not fighting but what about one for space on their shelves. Hey, it's their shelves. What I wanna uh shop is X in Seb Kiwi. Hey. No. Uh, no. They have a Let's create our own. Exactly. Let's create our own. Where there will be space for our things. You Talking know? about creating our own. You've opened like a shop. Yes. Vegetable. Backward, yes. Backward. Can yes. you tell tell me more about it? And I once read somewhere on social media what yeah. I yeah, they, they broke into it three times. Three I, times. I, yeah, I closed it, you know. And uh, it was called in Iloko Mafiking. And uh, where I feel, I feel like Iloko Mafiking should have done everything in their power to protect their to protect their own asset. The shop is, is called what? Backwild. Backwild. Yeah. So this is the name of the food brand. You oh, know. Dope, so yeah. it comes from Bakang Farm where I grew up. Oh. Yeah. So <laughs> but the Backwild comes from the hip hop. So this is where the two worlds meet. <laughs> you see. So I'm back. I'm leaning now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you know, and and, it, and it, that is what exactly I was doing when um, I I have to open the store because we're encouraging a lot of young people to get into farming. My produce said products and yeah, so on. Yeah. But where are their products going? You know, they need me to be there to aggregate for them, buy their mm. products, take it to the people, True that. create a direct uh, route. Yeah. to consumer without having uh, uh, to deal with big capital, you know. So we, a lot of us need to be moving into those spaces. So I closed the shop, but the idea is not dead. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, so you closed the shop? Yeah. But why did you close the shop? No, no, the, the shop will come back. Like I said, you know, as oh, mm. you know, everything in one generation. You can't. Mm. You can't achieve everything in one generation. But also, we also have online. I believe I believe you are also yeah. utilizing online yeah. like to yeah. sell yeah. like your, your vegetables and yeah. no not not so prominent yet. Um, the whole logist the whole business of online is about logistics. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you need to be strong logistically in terms of having refrigerated trucks, enough of them to if you create a demand to deliver on time and fresh stuff. True there. So mm -hmm. when I was running back wild, especially during the height of COVID getting locked down, we were doing the house deliveries. Oh, okay. But I quickly learned that uh, when it comes to fresh produce, you can't mess around with with food, you know. Mm -hmm. you, you have to make sure that the product arrives at the customer fresh, mm -hmm. in its right quantities, and on time. Yeah. Because food, when somebody wants to cook Sunday dinner and places an order and expects it on Saturday, and you can't make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not like sneakers. When you say, no, I'll deliver them on Sunday. No. Yeah. I need to cook today. For real. <laughs> what am I going to eat? You know that. what I mean? Yeah, so I get a call, you know, like, hey, dog, <laughs> hey, just, you know, on the other side of town. So I realized um, we can't rush into those things. We need to develop the systems, you know. Mm -hmm. So as the point I was making to you, we talked about Ronabo, we're going to go on. We're going to everything else in one generation, let alone one year. You know, you can't build. You know, uh, the reason why the Chinese, the Chinese wall, the reason why there are those pyramids in Egypt, it happened over g generations. Whoever came up with that plan knew for a fact that I'm going to die without seeing the completion of True this day. thing. You know, True when you look at the temple of, uh, of Solomon, you know, mm. how long it took, how many 
things it took to yeah, yeah, yeah. to complete it. We don't plan like that. We want to achieve our attachment to Palestine, man. Killing our Rudra Savage. Rome wasn't built in one day. No, we don't understand <laughs> that. You know, we want so instant successes mm. in a world that has been built over generations. You want to compete with pick and pay, but the shop has been there since 1968. Oof. Hey, bro, Mo, I feel like I'm in, a, I'm in a class. I'm in a history lesson. <laughs> I'm in a business lesson. Yo, guys, the Golden Touch podcast. We are still chilling with my brother, Mo, me all the way from. Yo, guys, the Golden Touch podcast. We are still chilling with my brother, Mo, me all the way from Buputatuana, Mafike. Is this still Buputatuana? No, no, no. It's not west. Let's not be west. politically correct. You know, yeah. uh, I always tell people that uh, um, we have to recognize Hori. We cannot. A shy away from it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But Botswana died at age 17. Oh, okay. Democracy is 27 years old. That means democracy has outlived Botswana way more. You know, we cannot allow our history to become a crutch mm. that weakens us. It's already that. Yeah. All right. It's already that. We're going to co- continue from there. Yeah. Give us the renewal mate, you know. Relax. Re- 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 <laughs> touch. I touch you, my boy. Easy, just the golden touch. Golden podcast. touch. Good. Man with the golden touch. With the golden touch. The golden touch. The golden touch. The golden touch. Yeah, Mr. Moore. Yeah. You're still lecturing here. Yeah. I think I believe many people yeah. are still confused. They once we yes. think Buputatswana, we think Mafike, Northwest. Yes. Can you like clarify what yeah. is Buputatswana? What is yeah. Northwest? Yeah. Northwest province. Yes. You know. Um, to put it uh, short and simple, in 1948, um, National Party uh, took power in South Africa yeah. through elections but you know at that time only white people could vote in south africa so only white people could vote yeah for the longest time i get uh, <laughs> you know south africa um became a union uh, okay other from the 1800s there was the cape and natal which was british ruled uh-huh. along with the zona land right yes yes yeah, yes uh, which came later in the 18, 1890s or so on uh-huh. right with the zona land protectorate but the cape it was part of the cape and natal and transvaal was a country on its own of the of the african people yeah. and then free state was also a country on its own of the african people oh, so okay. there was the anglo war in 1900 between the Afrikaners and the english and after that war in 1910 they created a union of south africa so the south africa became one country ruled uh, together by the British and the uh, Afrikaners. Yeah. In 40, in, so uh, there was a, a South African party that was, uh, in, so in 1948, mm. the National Party, because now they were breaking into parties, yeah, the National yeah. Party came into power with the policy of apartheid, which now said we need to be clear, you know, and when the apartheid that said apartheid is not going to last forever, mm, mm. but it should put, give the white men advantage. There was the purpose of it. Can the more also 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 be active in politics? No, no, no. I no, believe no. you. You can be like a real good leader. <laughs> I need to come quickly so that people can care context. Ne? Yeah. So the apartheid government came up with this political of stance. Yeah. They have they had reasons to do that. Uh, but what it actually meant is uh, segregating people into, um, uh, you know, these reserves that they had left for them creating them into many countries of their own so that people can think they are self-ruled, mm-hmm. but they are still under the apartheid government. You know, they're still report to Pretoria. So Bobutazon was one of those called homelands. Oh. Know? Yeah. So the political problem oh, with it is, okay. is, is like, it was an apartheid government policy. That thing. It was not freedom for Botswana or whatever. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was a policy of the apartheid government mm-hmm. to segregate people, but to also weaken the struggle for freedom, collective yeah, freedom. Yeah. Divide and rule, yeah, type yeah. effort, you know. Mm. So that was Bobuta was. Bobuta was founded in 1977, um, 1976, and uh, it ended it in, in uh, 1994 when um, we had democracy and South Africa became one country again. Oh, super. yeah. So where we live became Northwest Province because South Africa is divided into nine provinces. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but there was, you know, there was Siska, there was Transkai, there was Venda, there was Lubwa Homo, there was. Um, uh, yeah, the, so there were pockets of these homelands around, oh. you know. So 
the only thing that puts only comes up a lot is because uh, of the science cities of the you know the model that Rangopo was using you know to to better the lives of the people. Oh, know? okay. Yeah, in the, uh, in that way, it seems like the biggest sellout because it means he was cooperating with the enemy of the people. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, that's the political uh, background of where we are from. Mm. But the reality, Kori. When you look at the Motswako people who have come up prominence, they are beneficiary of the system of the zone because their development was very, very, very taking. Well, at least in Mafike, you know, mm, we mm, had mm. resources, we had coaches, yeah. and it showed that if you actually teach a black child proper, yeah. black child will flourish. Okay. You know? Okay. Yeah. So that's Ooh. what the zone is. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Mr. Mo, you were one of the like legendary hip hop yeah. artists in South no, Africa no, no, and really in really. Africa. No, man. no, you are legendary, Mr. Mo. No, I, I remember getting to Anayana. Yeah. I remember getting to Anayana. You yeah. know, I'll always every each and every morning I'll have to bump Motwako, and there has to be Mo, there yeah. has to be Dukes, there has yeah. to be Jeba. Yeah. And then I've, yeah. I've 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 checked out like currently there is a SA Hip Hop Museum. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And some South African hip hop legends yes. were honored yes. at the SA Hip Hop Museum. Yes. How do you feel? As one of the legends, mm. how do you feel? What's that honorary? Are yeah. you able to see the cool Yeah, I mean, there's, I think Jeba is there. I don't know who else. Um, let me just firstly say, now I'm so fortunate, Hori. I grew up in a time of giants. Yeah. So I inherited their shine, you know. I, I came up with the Jebas and the, and the Morafes and the Dukes of this world, you know. Yeah. yeah, they made it easy to set a high standard that I followed. So, to benefit of that system, I've never considered myself anything more, you know. Super. Uh, yeah, and then, um, secondly, you know, I always get those questions. Even now, South African Music Awards in TTD nominations for this year, mm. you know, I had said last time, you know, it's so good that South African Music Awards, the summers, have now recognized piano and gom yeah. as subcultures of the Kwaito, you know, mm-hmm. on their own and giving them their own categories. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, this is something we needed as a a long time ago, that uh, the industry needed to recognize us for what we are because we were that influential, yeah. you know, and um, it's like somebody has denied us something. Mm. But somebody very close to me said to me, you can't get leadership from victims. Anybody who, who 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 behaves like a victim cannot be revolutionary, you know. Mm. If you're going to do like there's somebody who's sidelining me or I'm a victim because or I'm not recognized there, yeah, then you are defeated. Yeah, nobody can take away uh, what I am. I get it. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's big, big. You can't take away. I'm more uh, wherever I go. <laughs> talking about talking about like. Uh, you know, growing up under like you know big guys like Jeba. Yes. Okay. Before I, I remember I learned something about the, the legendary, the late R.I.P. the V.I.P. Yes. Jeba man. Yeah. Uh, there was something special about Jeba. Yeah. Really, I, I remember I was performing somewhere with yes. Josie, and I used to like uh, Orala Mazas. Yes. I remember Jeba called me on the side. Hey, my name Mutuago. He, he called yes. me Mutuago. Yes. Mutuago. Kanto ana ga rule mazalo batho ba go bona ya ba go itse ya mvula rola di ditse ga bona superstar ana fit Ever since that day yeah. I never put on mazalo so, so. I never <laughs> And I always tell young guys I'm for to wa o rule mazalo mo di video how yes. you want to be known but you we pick them yes. out and I learned that from Jeba yes. yes. When I as like one of the people who yeah. really really grew up with Jeba yes. He like made history with yes. Jabba. What exactly? What have you learned the the most from Jabba that you can share with the whole world? Yeah, you know. Uh, firstly, is that there can only be one Jabba, because for the long time we've been crucified. Or you know, like Jabba was doing what he was doing because he was Jabba. You can't go out there and try to pretend to be Jabba. You know, he had a uh, a talent. Mm. For and the patience and everything else that it takes to bring out the best in others, you know, and that's a God given talent, it's not something that you can multi you, you can duplicate in JFL or when out with that touch or eight look push No, yeah, yeah, Java sacrificed a lot, you know, with his own income. Java could have been a multi millionaire at Lomo Dimensioning long time ago, mm. but instead, he used this money to develop others, a lot of it. And most of us, as yeah. we're mm, you know, mm. we climbed a plane the first time because it's ever. Wow. 
a lot of us. Wow. Okay, well, my first experience. And he never place. bragged about it. My first experience on a ship. My first experience in a hotel. My first experience on was with Jabba, you know. So, I mean, Jabba was the kind of guy. He's not like Nicky Shutler. You know, you know, you know I, can, I come from a proper family. Yeah. But he's still that kind of nigga who just like, hey, most of our fit in the morning. So now that I go more on buying clothes for about 10K, you know. You like that? You like that? Yeah, why don't you take a look at your body? No, man. I'm a guy. Go out yeah. there, feel good. You know, you're a star and go make you shine. Yeah. This is not only me. Did that for a lot of guys, you know. Uh, when we came up as Morafi in 2001, too, we lived in Jabba's house. Oh. Yeah, for about almost a year. Sharing okay. every meal together. Morafi eating from the same spot all over was our life. Oh, Asia okay. Tina, Tlapi, Lulufa, Morato, every day. Yeah. How was you? 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 But yeah. we made those sacrifices. We made those sacrifices. We made those sacrifices. <laughs> because there were so many of us. Uh, great. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, what I learned from him is that um, be the best you are. Don't try to be somebody you're not. You know, uh, what I am, I should try so much to be more of that instead of being pressured into trying to act like Jerry because I, I'll never be him. Never. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And there'll never be another more. So, mm. yeah, I think that's what I learned a lot from, from my, 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 my brother. May his uh, soul, May his soul continue, rest in peace. Continue to, yeah. to flourish. Uh, yeah. The Jebba, Jebba still lives. Bro. Yeah. Jebba. Yeah. You know, the passing of Drama Boy, it really hurt me because um, it really reminded me of the passing of, of Jebba. You know, because. Um, yeah, age, man. Yeah. It, Two dozen. You see what I'm saying? And, such, um, a, such a young talent. You know, um, it shows us the failing of our systems to create security for artists or young entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the systems are failing and we need to do something about that. For real? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Mo. Uh, tell me what satisfaction has Motuako like uh, given you internally, yeah. and, and like how has Motuako changed you before there was Mister yeah. Mo who's in the limelight yeah. and the current Mister Mo yeah. right now? Yeah. Let's just chop it up quick first. Um, one time, Kokore, I realized later, other than uh, earlier, that also music has to do with personality more than just the ability to sing or rap. You know, you need to have that public personality. You need to be outgoing. You need to yeah. have your charm. Because in more cases, nine out of ten times, is the charm that sells than the talent. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. When I say charm, I don't mean you need to be handsome or beautiful. Or you need to just have that thing that people people skills, exactly. communication skills, yeah, and... exact communication skills. Just light up the room. You know, type mm. effort, and that's something you are born with. You. You can't fabricate it. For real. You can learn whatever, you know. I always see the discussion yeah, between Ser uh, Serena Williams and uh, uh, who's that other Russian uh, chick. Uh, you know, um, Serena has won like 23 Grand Slams. Yeah. That woman won about five. Mm. Yet, you know, uh, the media always want to make them as of that. They're, they're equal rivals. But issue is, there's just something more that, you know, Roger Federer is loved more because he's just so... <laughs> yeah, ne? yeah. Hey. So, but it's like that. It's, the, it's like the Ronaldos, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know. So, but anyway, quick to get to your point, Corey. I learned that later, and then I realized, and I realized that you know, now as a person, really, um, I really still enjoy wanting to walk through the mall and not people stop me because I used to walk around with Jabba and it was a hell. <laughs> I don't like that. So I don't stop everywhere. I have realized you're just you just want to be a simple brother. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So good. I. I, I put myself like that. I, I drive dress, you know, and people will still recognize me. But because like Ubu, mm. people have seen it in me. They treat me like that. When yeah. they see me, they just greet me and you know, they don't I, try to. You I know. always tell people, Hore, you know, how you how you present yourself yeah. is also how people will treat you. Back. Treat you. Yeah. yeah. You go out on social media and you start talking crap yeah. all the time. Yeah. People are going to be talking crap to yeah. you because they feel like, oh, this is his this lifestyle. Is you get this is the you, I mean, you become like that educate, like that educating brother. Mm. You know, you you gr you also grab attention of guys who wants to be like educated. Learn, yeah. you get learners exactly. and all that. Yes. Oh. Yeah. So yeah. it's the energy you put out in the world. Ah, so now, you know, I realized very early on that you know, 
I, I still can enjoy my music without chasing the hype. And yeah. this is not trying to be political or funny or anything. I always knew that it means that the way I position my brand, I'm not going to become um, rich from rapping. But yeah. I'm going to use rap as a marketing tool to sell yeah. what I really want to do, which is farming. You know, mm -hmm. build a brand, break it up with my music, and take it into the world. You Super. Know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. even coming here to Zona today, we have a meeting with one of the retailers that I organized through. Uh, Trauma, yeah, you know, yeah, trauma yeah. is our brother. Is like, come rap. I was like, okay, it's cool, but please help me with that because I always have to keep the bigger goal in mind. What true it is you trying to achieve? You true know? True yeah. Day. So soon, not than later, mm. Backwild will be on the shelves in bots. Yeah. Let alone the all of BW. Super. That is my goal. Ah, uh, great. What are you currently working on? Um, farming. Prom uh, perfecting my production, increasing my capacity because I've done most of the groundwork. Issue now is to just bring the product, yeah. you know. Yeah, so this is what my energy is right now, uh, you know. Mm. Other than the fact that you know, I've been working a lot, I have had the privilege to be close to Tooks and watching development of our culture yeah, as a yeah. producer, as a DJ. You know, it has changed our energy, the young people that he's working with the new energy that we always needed to see coming through um it has really resuscitated my spirit to want to rap again you know to, to enjoy what i do <laughs> that's what i want to hear yeah. i want to rap again yeah yeah, yeah. yeah i just want to rap more again and not feel like uh i'm rapping to prove something or i still have it no mm. enjoy what i do because when I was eight years old, I was rapping, you know, yeah. how to get room making good quality raps. Mm -hmm. And because I loved it, I loved it. And I, I, you know, it's so difficult to still just put everything aside and just enjoy what really brings you joy. And also, you guys are you, you, Dukes, and more, and to you, Dukes, and DJ Lemonka. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've checked out the Nality podcast. Yes, yes, Can you yes. tell me more, just in brief, yeah. about the Nality uh, Lady podcast? And yeah. Where do people watch it? Yeah. Yeah, Dina Lady, uh, it's on YouTube. You just uh, go on to YouTube, check out Dina Lady. We have four, only four episodes right now, but uh, it's our it's our podcast. So we, you know, uh, once you know um, we getting production moving, I suppose it will go. Yeah. But it was born out of the idea of the century soon local bank and this thing. We can't allow Mojago to collapse and die in our arms. Yeah. You know. We really need to fix it so that when we hand it over to the next generation, know that we have done our work. You know, we didn't build something and killed it out of spite. For real. Nobody must inherit it. Yeah. So the lady is just part of us trying to fix this thing again and say, guys, where are we? Where is this thing? Where do we need to start to fix it? To creating new platforms and the right platforms too again see i never missed all the i, I watched all the all the episodes. the episodes my favorite episodes or episode was with uh what's his name the dj guy the lawyer yeah uh, uh, hypnosis, Hi hypnosis. Yes. Ah, that was Hypno. that was Isn't really that some schooling the man has taken over you know uh uh music stuff is going back 15 18 years Finding all our music, the yeah. catalogs, the record companies, the publishings, fixing all of that for us. And we're like, wow, we just needed someone like that. For hey, real, eh? 15 years ago, we never had him. Eish. You know, but now that he's here, mm. let's get to work. I get it. Yeah. Ah, wow. That's great. Really inspirational and informative information from my brother, Mo Mulimi Motapelo Murule. Mr. Mo. Yeah. Ah, bro. Erichaiete, I know, bro. Erichaiete, but I'm really humbled to be like having you in the Golden Touch podcast. Yeah. And I just wanna wish you all the best. Yeah. Mudi mago soko fatse, braya. Mudi mago keleze, and just keep on like uh, giving us yeah. fresh produce and yeah. keep on giving us like quality content, music with yeah. uh like really good information out yeah. there. And ah, brother. Yeah. Ish. <laughs> because, uh, my, I really, really appreciate you, bro. More. So, yeah, God bless you, bro. Yeah, I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to go Wow, wow. 
Wow, well, exclusive. The Golden Touch podcast. Touch Mo Twak Twak. Golden Touch. Golden Touch. Check us on Facebook. Golden Touch on YouTube. Golden Touch. Follow Touch Mo Twak Twak. Follow Mo Mulimi in all social media platforms. Yo, it was a really a great one. I'm signing out. We out here. Man with the Golden Touch. With the Golden Touch. With the Golden Touch.